Hello, good evening. Drink Nestle's coffee, and I don't know who else is our sponsor. Okay, good evening. Let's start this. Okay, I want to do a, a bit of a longer haul on this topic. We touched on it a bit when we were doing Hukas Kriyashma. I want to start once again with uh, with one thing to remind. The first, we go back to the first, there's two points here. First, I'd like to talk about the major theme of the Seder night, which we did not discuss, and also got the Ramam and the famous Ramam and Hukas Kriyashma. I don't think I elaborate on that. I want to explain it. There is a common uh, question asked by some, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, Sam, you're out. You're okay. Okay, you feel better. Good, I didn't notice, I saw a cup, it was a you. Okay, okay, that's the problem. People love God, they only see the hand that feeds them. They have to look at him, okay. Okay, so um, uh, the common theme which runs around, they all ask the question. So I think Rav Soloveitchik has a piece on it officially in the name of Rav Chaim. Uh, what's the difference between the mitzvah of Sipi Sis Mitzrayim and Leil Pesach versus the, so, so to speak, mitzvah of Sikhir Sis Mitzrayim all year, right? And they make these differences. It's a whole, it's in, it's in, in, in Rav Soloveitchik's blue book, Ayin Shom Betim Tzanachas. Um, um, I'd like to, um, if you don't mind, see what the primary sources really say. So let's first look at the, um, before we go further, this, let's just look at source Aleph, which is the um, me and Amitz is found at the beginning of Hilchus Kriyashma. I don't know, not, don't know if you know what the purpose of this is. I guess I will explain it. In the Haggadah to the same, see, sometimes, you know, if you don't read the Haggadah of a book, you don't understand its purpose, so you like start seeing things which are really not there. Okay, so what's the purpose of, of the Sefer HaMitzvah and what's the purpose of this million HaMitzvah found in the beginning of the Allah? Rama writes in the Haggadama of the uh, of the Sefer HaMitzvah, the reason he's writing this book, because he really is about to write a book called Mishnah Torah, and he wants to include in it all the basic halachas, my say, all of Taryag, uh, all of Taryag literally, without all the shock of a tayyab, but the Pisca halachas, basically including all the mitzvahs. Now, but he doesn't plan to write it according to the order of mitzvahs and not according to the sugas of shas. He wants to make it what you know is called as different books, Noshim, Nezikim, etc., you know, Yisurubiya, Kedusha, whatever, the, all these different halachas. How is he going to make sure that he's going to, he won't forget one of the mitzvahs? So the first job he's going to do is to make a list of what exactly Tayyag mitzvahs are. After he has that, now he has basically a flow chart, a plan, Okay, now this mitzvah, now I'll make sure that whatever, when I make a book, which book, let's say Sefer Nezikeh and Hilchus Nizkei Mamayim, I will look in Hilchus Nizkei Mamayim and I'll say, okay, Sefer Nezikeh, how many mitzvahs do I plan to put there? In Hilchus Nizkei Mamayim, how many mitzvahs are there? In Hilchus Chavla Mazik, how many mitzvahs are there? And so on and so forth. And I'll always check it against my list and then I'll know exactly that I'm not going to miss one of the mitzvahs. That's what the Ramam actually writes. So in other words, those who think there should be a discrepancy, there can be a discrepancy between Sefer and Mitzvahs and the Yad. I mean, I, I don't mind that they're ignorant people, but it's okay with me, but I mean, they simply never read the Hagdama of the Sefer and Mitzvahs to understand. Okay, let's put this on the table just to clarify it. As to why the Ramah writes things in one way and not in the other. Once again, if you do a serious study, you, you'd understand. I'm not going to explain this here. There's a lot of populistic things in there, because, but you have to do a serious study in what, how the Ramah uh, formulates things in Sefer Mitzvahs versus how he formulates it in the Yad. Not going there at the moment. Definitely not what the populist uh, takes for granted because they heard speech A or B or C. Um, uh, after the Ramah did that, so in Hanami, so after he had the Sefer Mitzvahs, he then uh, wrote in the Agudama of the Mishnah, Mishnah Torah, he again enumerated that list, Bekitzer. Sefer Mitzvahs is by Rikhus, explaining where it's from, which Psukim, etc., where the Gemaras will be found. In Sefer Mitzvahs, the Kakotza, which is found in the beginning of the uh, Mishnah Torah, he simply did a little, a short, a, a shorthand list of those Mitzvahs. That would not be enough. Now, every time he brought a book, we would say, okay, Sefer Nazit, and by this and these mitzvahs, he would take those out of the list. And when he got this, I said before, let's say, there's going to be so-and-so mitzvahs. If you look at the 
at the Hagdama of the Yad, you'll see he literally enumerates the number of mitzvahs on in his sefer. You don't read the Hagdama of the Yad. You only start with the Mishnah Torah itself. Try reading the Hagdama. You know, uh, you know the, the saying used to be when I was growing up, a book without an Hagdama is like a goof without a neshama. I mean, you have to understand what the purpose is and what the, what's the intent of the author, not what you want to stick into the language. But what does the author really mean? What is he, what, what, what is, what's the purpose of writing the book? Very important to understand these things, and a lot of the yukim and things that will fall, if you understand a bit more of what, what, what's being written here and the why of the writing. Anyway, and then obviously in each, in each books per se, he would bring those mitzvahs again. That's what you have in the beginning, of Kriya Shema, the mitzvah Kriya Shema, and so on and so forth. Um, um, and this is what he writes. In light of this, look at source Aleph, Hilchus Kriyat Shema, Mitzvah Tasei Achas. In other words, in this Sefer of Hilchus Kriyat Shema, what is enumerated here is only one Mitzvah Tasei. Not two, not three, only one. There's no other Mitzvah Tasei mentioned in these halachas. Okay. What is that Mitzvah Tasei? Likros Kriyat Shema Pamayim B'yayim. What exactly Kriyat Shema is? And when is the Pamayim B'yayim? We'll see further. Bir Mitzvah Zubi Prokim Eilu. So let's look carefully what it says. Um, we can just read this very fast. Pamayim B'chol Yem Karim Kriyat Shema B'yayim B'bayker. You obviously know what that means. Shene Ema B'shach B'chol Kumecha. Yep. B'shash Yedev Ni Adim Shoich Vim V'zehu Layla. Obviously meant to doing the biblical person which didn't have electricity so he would go to sleep after the shkia because there was no there was no electricity you know he goes to sleep with the chickens and like the farmer and he wakes up with the crack of dawn or even beforehand the mice you can start saying kriya shma but you have definitely not nets okay definitely nets that's what it is there she's a that's the beginning of the day that's where it starts when does it end? In the biblical period, the Dech Bnei Malachim, the later days, which weren't going to work, they would definitely be up and running by, let's say, if Nets is six, by nine, they were up. Epis in America, I think on Sundays, Bnei Malachim are, are a bit later. But the, but the, at least during the biblical period, that's when people woke up. Okay, we're not going to say Dech Shachiva, Dech Kima, depends on what period in history. It depends on the biblical era. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Number one, halacha beizu mahi akri kore. What does he read? There's three parshias: Eilu and Shema, v'hoyim Shemaya, v'yoyimer. The big sugi and bracha. So now, what do you do? Why do you do? Why these three? And what's the sequence? So he says, "Magdimim likres parshias Shema." You first read Shema. Shema means Shema and v'hafta is the shem of kecha. Mipnei Aleph, the parsha of Shema and v'hafta. Yesh ba yichud Hashem, the idea of the total oneness of God. Ahavosai, the constant. The perpetual quest for constant proximity, which is the hakdor of the word ava. I think I taught that already in the past. That's what ava is a, a, a an unquenchable desire, an obsessive desire to be exact. It's a kairo. It's an obsessive desire for constant proximity. That's ava. And with Talmudo, because how are you going to love when you love a person? You want to know what makes him move, what are her or her values? Who are you? It's an unfolding mystery that goes on forever. Uh, and that's Talmud. You get to know the value system of a Kaddish Bochu through distilling his halachis, his meta halachic principles, his, uh, his uh, philosophical underpinnings, and ultimately you understand his value system. The Ramban writes this in Kedoshim to you. You can look it up there. Shehu ha'ikah gadol shakot talui bo. In other words, Yichud Hashem is the cornerstone, and around it lies Avasai and Talmudai, which are all one big enhancing of the Yichud Hashem. That's what he's saying. Shehu, he's talking about who? Don't say shame. Shehu, and is that Yichud Hashem, which is which is includes Avasai v'teirasai. That is the who. That is the foundation, the cornerstone of our Judaism. And after that parsha, what do we read? Which what's the focus there? Well, as you know, in all relationships, you have a tremendous quest of wanting to know me and be close to me. There's rules of how we interact with each other. Every society, even thieves, have rules between themselves. There's the famous language of the of the Ran, which mentions that in the drush of Shoftim Shoftim Titlucha. Okay, that's what we used to call Yoshev Kronos, if you ever learned Sanhedrin. 
it's the you know the guys in the bar which which decide between uh, Don Corleone and Don Giovanni um, who kills who on Monday. You know what I mean? This is the certain chayim mishpat in the seder of a dvar. So he says over there you have to know misvaysav. If you, if we are in a relationship, there's laws regulating. I, I, a B obviously more than that. These mitzvahs are the bridge in which we can actually interact. Between the, the connection to the infinite and the finite is logically impossible. It's only the bridge over that abyss is only through mitzvahs. Mitzvahs, mitzvahs, and seves, it tied us together. Okay, and then there's obviously the third one. That is the idea. Now, that's an interesting language. Look right there. Is there a tzivui of schiris and mitzvahs in, uh, in Pashas Vahayim Vahayim Hashem and Vahayim and Tzitzis? I'd like to someone tell me what the lushan of the tzivui is. Who volunteers? Show me a lushan of tzivui in that parsha, and I will eat my hat. I have an array. I'll do my straw one. Okay, show me a lushan of tzivui in that parsha. What's the lushan of tzivui in that parsha? Vasula hem tzitzis is a tzivui. Okay, is there a isim I say a tzivui? Do you say kriyashma? I mean, you just that mire if not that long ago, right? Obviously, you translated what you're saying. I answered, Vasil hem tzitzis are kind of the MD race of the Nasra tzitzis are kind of siltechez. Those are the tzivui. Or isim oisoi who zechartem is come itzvos Hashem. Is there a lashon tzivui there on zechira? Is that a yes or no? Can anybody tell me yes? Whoever thinks yes, please raise your hand. You're scared. Well, I think it is. Now tell me, is there anyone that agrees with me? You don't even do that. I can't intimidate you. To do something stupid. Well, there is no lashon tzivui there. Even there isim oisoi. There's a mitzvah looking at tzitzis. Yeah. Do you like how much you have to look at it? Kishir chaznish. I don't know how much you have to open up two eyes. What I do, okay, Risa is the mitzvah, a typish term in design, okay? No, it's saying you, if then you will be able to see it and then you will remember. Does it say a commandment to remember? Is there a commandment to remember the mitzvahs? Is there a simple shukhana of mitzvahs that say the skort of mitzvahs? Is there a Rambam that says mitzvah say the skort of mitzvahs? Is it bought on the Shulchan Aruch and in tour in any a mitzvah liskar some mitzvahs? If you find it, I guess I have to change my name. Huckleberry Finn. It's not there. So now explain the language. See if we hear us call our mitzvahs. It's your first question. You've got to come to the conclusion that not always is see we a commandment. But there is no tzivui. It's not even written by Lushan tzivui. Or isim say if you will remember, it was a heart, then you will remember. What happens if I don't look at my tzitzis? I'm not Nakaim of Bambatla Mitzvah Sasei. When's the last time you looked at your tzitzis and you remembered mitzvahs? Remember, I told you the story with my blue over there. You know, the guy that wanted me to be, to, to get tchelis. You know, I told him it doesn't work for me. Remember, I didn't share it until that story. It doesn't work for me. Okay. When you think blue, do you think about the ocean? If you think about the beach, do you think about the water? No, you, do you? And if you finally put your nose into the water, do you think about the sky? When the last time you thought about the sky when you when you when you were in the water at the beach? And if you look, if you look at the sky, you said Kishlavana, right? You did that, so you looked up to the sky. You know, did you Ramesh, visualize Kisei HaKavai? Is it green? Like, what did you visualize? Did you think of Kisei HaKavai then? It's really important because there we talk to say Kisei HaKavai is a meeting with God. You're actually supposed to be thinking of meeting when you said Kiddush Tavon. Did anybody think about that? That's a charof in the Gemara, and you even say it in the Siddur. That's like a bush of a charpa. You should. There you should. <laughs> okay, but do you? Nah, 
do me a favor. See, I'm not really doing this, but the sitter says I should. Okay. Okay. You're not doing it, right? I don't know. Did, did you, uh, you were a couple of Bichesh B'Shamayim, Kiddush Levana? Were you? Yes or no? It's a question. What? No. What? No, no, not what? In the way I'm supposed to. How do you know what you, whatever you did, maybe it's enough. What way, how, what way did you do it in? What? What did you do? I'm, I'm curious. I don't know what it is. Can you describe to me the sensation of the Kabbalah Pnei Avicha Shema Shemai? Why don't you say just no and not that, not the way I should have? No would be a better answer. Okay, does anybody want to say yes? And please describe the sensation to me. I think you're all going to plead the Fifth Amendment, if you know what that is. Okay, let's face it. You didn't. Okay? There's no way. Okay. I know that. No, 18-year-old pumpkins. There's no way. You didn't, didn't learn enough to even have what the word means, let alone to experience it. Okay? This takes training to be able to even think in that fashion. So that's obviously a value thought that people say, Kiddush the one. Not to do it. Oops, he lived before, you know, he didn't live in 2021. What can I tell you? Okay, Vaita. So now, when's the last time you looked at the sky and you thought about Kisei Akavait? What does that mean? What are you supposed to think about Kisei Akavait? Oh, it's a throne and it says God on it in the back? Like, what does Kisei Akavait look like? So obviously, you're not Mekayim that. Do, I, do we agree to this? Okay. Are you about limits as I say? Because that's how you're supposed to remember the mitzvahs, right? The color blue. You don't think of an energizer drink. You think you don't think about what's happening on the sand and the beach. You're thinking only about the ocean. Okay. And as soon as you see the ocean, you realize the blue of the ocean is a reflection, so to speak, of the sky. It's actually the opposite. But it doesn't matter. But somehow, you, primitive man thought this is blue and that's blue. Somehow, he decided the sky is blue. Okay. Pre smog, you obviously doesn't. You, you put up in cities in LA because you can't see the sky, and then London most days of the year, you know. But it was all Zayna, right? So you obviously, so you didn't. So you, so you saw the sky. Your mom thought of Kisei Akavit. I personally love astronomy. Okay, and uh, at one time I owned a very good telescope, a real telescope, no, the telescope. Uh, you know, it, it, oh, no, covered the Marabu Basach Hashem, Chachmas Hakadosh Baruch Hu. What exactly is Kisya covered that you're thinking about? That's the thing that Shlomo Melch had with the lions and the cows and all that. Like, if you look at the Kisya covered in, in the Nevi'im, it sounds like God has a menagerie there. It's like a zoo. I guess He likes animals. Vas mentos. You obviously are not Mekai in the mitzvah because you don't have a clue of what it means. Is it a mitzvah to say? Was anybody here in William Butler? I can promise you, you were. You were used to the midst of tzitzis, even if you didn't think about God for a minute. The marshal, you're supposed to put the sit the tzitzis. Why are you supposed to sit in sukkahs? Because it says, give a sukkahs a shaftis bnei yisro. With great respect to the Bach, which is a das yochid. Okay, uh, das yochid. So it's not my, uh, so he probably didn't sleep well at night. There's no reason, to, since it's not put down in Rishonim and Chidusha Alochas of, of Achroinim, which you have done of a Zech and Gemara, so Rishonim. Zechroinim Levracha. What happens if you didn't remember that God took you out of Egypt uh, uh, and put you in huts? Were you a Mr. Sukkah or not? I want to know. Every time you walked into the Sukkah, you saw some kind of Mr. Sukkah, right? Okay, what happens if you're in the sukkah? You didn't think about huts in the desert. Were you yitz or not? You were yitz. You were yitz. Okay, v'chulu. I'm trying to say the mantisku is ma'akiv in mitzitzitzis. It's not even a t'nai. He is, and the Ram calls it tzivui. I feel like t'nai in the tzivui. This nish is what's meant as the tzivui. What's the lesson tzivui in this Ramba? <laughs> Let's go further. Take that into account when we go further. And then he writes, more than what, what is it exactly in the Pasuk? The Pasuk simply says, if you do this, what's the end game of the mitzvah? What's the goal of the mitzvah? What's the, as one would say, what's the key mitzvah b'shleim was you would attain the goal of the mitzvah? That would be schiris yitzhiyas mitzvah, granted. 
But there's a lot of mitzvahs are like that. Hello, should we describe how many mitzvahs there are? Zechot Tzitz Mitzrayim. Someone said Kiddush here or, or heard Kiddush on Friday night. Mishtama, you know, it says over there, Zechi, why did God manchel it to the Jews? Because it's a Kiddush, Zechel, it's Yes Mitzrayim. The fact that you can, the Jews have the Koyach of Kiddush Hamoyadim, from Machedish Zalachem, where's the source of that? The source of that comes from Shabbos. It's from Kurshi Gemara. When we say Mikadish Yashabbos Yisrael Vazmanim, so Rabbi Yoyin explains in Brachis, it's Mikadish Yashabbos. The sanctification of time, which came through Shabbos, empowers the Jew, Yisrael, to be able to be Mikadish Yashazmanim. You say that in Kiddush every day. Kiyoyim Tchila Lemikroi Kiddush. What do you mean, Mikroi Kiddush? Mikroi Kiddush means times of convocation with God. Why is this called Tchila? It's something Terence says because it's the Shirish. It's the Shirish of Kedush Yisrael's mind. Tchila le Mikroi Kiddush. This is Echetz Yis Mitzrayim. Where's this Echetz Yis Mitzrayim? When did we find out that Shabbos is Tchila Mikroi Kiddush? In our Chodesh Yisrael Lachem Rosh Hashem, a Pasha's boy. That's what it is. Have you thought about that lately? Were you thinking about Kiddush? Well, how many of you thought in Kiddush and Shabbos because Shabbos empowers me to Kiddush as Zmanim, which you got from Parshas Boy in the I, I, I've been in education too long. None of you. Okay? Let's be honest. It's, it's, it's felt in the Kiddush. So Shabbos is Echitz Yisrael. If you didn't think about that, you've felt in Shabbos. It's a goal. The goal, one of the goals of Shabbos is to have that. And if you didn't realize that goal, which most people don't, in the mitzvah of Shabbos. Is it a mitzvah to remember the Zechel Tzitz Mitzrayim? We do Kishu. We go on. How many mitzvahs are Zechel Tzitz Mitzrayim? Open a partial place. And he starts telling you how many things you have to do because of that. Well, you have to be got to Labincha. Oh, and there's also Kedushas Bechaira. And you have to put on Tzvillin. Every day you put on Tzvillin, the black boxes. That's Zechel Tzitz Mitzrayim. It's and Chumash. And if you didn't think of Zechit Tzitz Mitzrayim, you weren't Yitzim as a Tzvillin, you're a Kaftali Manach Tzvillin. Zayt Mer Moichu. Obviously not. So what is it? It's the end goal. It's a va- what is this? God, the things that God commands you to do, and things which God tells you, this is what I'd like to happen. And I don't mean like this uh, Don Vito Colion that if you don't listen to what he wants to happen, he puts a dead horse in your bed. I don't mean that. I mean, our relation with God is such that we want to fulfill his will. Whether the will was set in a commandment for us, what's a commandment passion? It's a relationship of commander, commanded, vis-a-vis commandment. It's a relationship of mitzvah, mitzvah, vis through a kesher, mitzvah, mitzvah, with the kesher through the mitzvah. What about my relationship with my wife? Is everything a mitzvah? Yeah, I should tell my wife, honey, I really honor you because the Ram says I'm chayiv too. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll be sleeping more nights in Karen Biavna than in Yerushalayim, you understand? You know, <laughs> I have to say, happy anniversary because the Ram says, you'll get, the, you'll, you'll get a, a rolling pin on your head. What are you talking about? Narish guy. The Terence says, because you understand your relationship is as such that you want to nurture the relationship. This is what pleasure people, once a person asked me, why do you put on Tefillin? You know, this is the type of people which are sarcastic, so I'm not going to give a theological answer. It's not going to help anyway. Chabad al So I says, do, do, do you give flowers to your wife like on occasions? She says, yeah. Why do you do it? I love her smile. Oh, my Tefillin are God's flowers, and I love his smile. It's a nice way of saying, this is, he likes this. So even if I would know it's Ratz and Hashem, even if it wasn't a tzivu, it's also mechaiv me to do it. Is there an oinish on that? What happens if I have a tzivu, and it's a value of a Kaddish Baruch but I don't have a, a specific commandment? So for Shiramba, the Rambam writes to Mary Nebuchadnezzar that prior to the Nebuchadnezzar of Moshe Rabbeinu, there was never a prophet which was commanded to say, go to the people and tell them and tell them in my name that I command them to do so and such. That never happened prior to Moshe Rabbeinu. Noach was not commanded to command people in seven mitzvahs, or Adam, six mitzvahs, and Noach added the seventh. Eva Menachai, that's a Ramam Hilchus Malachim. Adam was not commanded. What was he commanded? 
He was commanded, this I'm commanding to you. Yes, God can command people. He had a private commandment. And he was told, teach the people and they should do it because they know this my will. Don't command them, teach them my will. A whole period can learn a book about this. That's why the Rama writes today, Ger Taishiv is only someone which accepts the Shiva Mitzvah. It's not because of the historical reality of Noyach, because that wasn't a commandment, that was just a teaching. After Matan Torah, Matan Torah includes two covenants. One, the covenant of 630 mitzvahs for the Bnei Yisrael, and another covenant of seven mitzvahs for the Bnei Noyach. Sinai is not just a Jewish experience, by the way. Okay, and what and Moshe Rabbeinu's Nevua transformed those values into a mitzvah. That's a Mephusha Rambam. Just want you to know. It's also Rambam also in Chulun Pesha Mishnah. Memela, we want to ask that, is, now is it binding? Yes, Anshe Shechem were killed because they didn't fulfill Shema Mitzvah B'nai Noach, read your Ramban or Rambam Hilchus Malachim. And the answer is, if you know that that's the will of God, it's obligatory. In other words, it's interesting. I didn't command you. you it's, not, it's not because you transgressed the commandment, because you flaunted my will and you knew it was my will. Because you were taught that this was my will. So it's also actually mechaiv. I want you to understand by Shem Mitzvah Bnei Neich, Bnei Neich mechaiv misa because of that, even without a tzivui. Now, today, Lemaisa, there's no onshin on values. We don't have that anymore. According to Yachash and Nitna Taira, onshin are old, ain't onshin became Mazirian, so there has to be an Azora, there has to be a Tzivoy, there has to be an Azora, a Loitasu, because there's a cloud of ain't onshin became Mazirian, but that did not exist prior to Matan Taira. Prior to Matan Taira, there's onshin without Azora, onshin with Yedias Ratzon Hashem. After Matan Torah, there's a dinner, there's now a relationship called Mitzivuyim, and therefore ain't ancient Elim came Masirim, therefore there has to be a commandment that's forewarning. Good. So now what do we know? We know there are a lot of values. The Ram seems to be saying well, these values are called Sivuyim. In other words, they're not called mitzvahs as say, but they're called mitzvah. How do I know that? Go further to the next piece of Rambam. Halacha Gimel, Afal Pisha ain mitzvah sitzis no heges balayla, the Tigmar and Brachas. And Lechaibra, if God does not expect you to use sitzis to remember there's mitzvahs at night, right? Laila is not on sitzis. One of the tools of remembering mitzvahs is sitzis. And if God says you're exempt from this tool at night, equals you're exempt from this vehicle of remembering. The mitzvahs. So if that's the case, why do we dafki read Parsha Tzitzis at night? God, expresses Tzitzis is a vehicle of remembering the mitzvahs. That aspect of remembering mitzvahs, you're exempt from at night. Okay? Afa gav, that what? She ain't mitzvah tzitzis negis balayla. So then why do we read Parsha Tzitzis by Myriv? Karim oisa balayla. Why would they shiyesh by zikorin yitzis mitzrayim? And therefore what? Or mitzvah, let's with the word mitzvah, you normally think it means commandment. What's the what's the marker? You know, you say mitzvah, you gotta have a pasik. Right? You can't make a mitzvah without a pasik. What's the pasik? Shenamara is the pasik lament is goes your in say scrum eras mitzraim call your mechayeko. That is so nice. Is that a Russian Sivui? Hello? <laughs> what is that Pussy talking about? Anybody know? What? Laman Tisker, it's a mitzvah. Let go at the moment, okay? Would it be? It's a mitzvah that you do in order to remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim all your life, putting on tefillin, etc. Is that a tzivui to remember Zias Mitzrayim Kol Yemei Chayecha? Or is it is a tzivui to do a mitzvah in order to remember? Which one is it? The latter. Laman means you're doing this for the purpose of, you should remember. So the zikorin Kol Yemei Chayecha, is that a commandment or is that a value? which was not written in the language of imperative, of religious imperative. 
It's a value. It's a religious value, which is very important. It could be binding, could even be obliging, but it is not written in the language of a religious imperative. It's not a mitzvah to say. There is no pasik. You can't make a mitzvah for a pasik which doesn't talk a lush and tzibur. If that's the case, we can start making mitzvahs of every other pasik and chumash, for goodness sakes. It's impossible. Is there a mitzvah to look at tzitzis? With greatest respect to all these things, every little shmendri they put the tzitzis out. There's no mitzvah to look at tzitzis. It's worth looking at tzitzis if, if, if they had tchelis, because then you would remember, etc., etc., etc. You don't have trailers. What are you looking for? Okay. The Gemara seems to be saying that the Tlovan is not with my mask the sits is with great respect to the Kshorim, etc. The Pasik says the trailers. As we all know, that the Rashi over there is very awkward because the, all the Kshorim are Durabanan and the Krikis are not even Durabanan. What are we really talking about? The only thing to is Kesha Elyon, and therefore you only have one Kesha, and Rashi makes the Kesha of Taryag according to the. The Ramban asked the question, but like he doesn't understand what Rashi is saying. How are you supposed to remember it? <laughs> All these things are Durabana. I think God is talking about Dinim Durabana that happened much later in history. The Ramban says, we're talking about Tchelus. Yeah. It means to say there's no reason why it was a heart to Lechaira as far as, as, far as looking at tzitzis, Bismana says, so can you keep your tzitzis in your pocket or under your belt? Okay. Okay, they have to understand. That's the end. I remember there was once a guy in, in my shir in Heaven Yeshiva. He walked out with the tzitzis and, they, and, and you saw it a bit protruding from the jacket. My Rebbe Ribzis looks at it in the, in the middle of shir says, Fich! <laughs> he made this disgusting face. Are you selling laundry? Pakosh <laughs> Vesh? He says, so he says, no. So why are you going? Where does everybody have to see that you heard that you have tzitzis? You can put it around your belt and no one has to see it except for you. Okay. He was very disgusted with this. But it's, it's, it was it us. So I told him then it was a Mishnah Burr. says, yeah, <laughs> whatever he said, he said. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Mishnah Burr has this emotional idea because it's the uniform of God and we're proud of our uniform. These are nice svaroloch, but they're not the right. It's not your abundance, not anything. What are they? It's a drosha. It's a drosha. We should say Hanayim and Akashi after that drosha. It's not a din. It's, it's a drosha. It's a very nice sermon. Do you keep all the, the do you read all the the drushes of, of the of the Sefer Shemir Selashim and Chafetz Chaim? There's a lot of drushes there. Have you read them? Have you read them? Well, you should read them. If this is a drusha, that's a drusha. If not, keep your tzitzis in your pocket. Okay? Befrat that they don't have tchelis. Ad kan. Uvchem vashtek do mefurish. Dashtek mefurish is a mitzvah of zchir zitzvayim balayla. Is it a mitzvah? Or is it just the you do mitzvahs in order to facilitate that value? There's no pasuk. And if it was a mitzvah, for goodness sakes, why does the Raman enumerate this only one mitzvah in these halachas? There's a second mitzvah. Mitzvah zechias yitzias mitzrayim kol yimay ashana. There's a second mitzvah. Why does the Raman write there's only one mitzvah? There's two. The Rambam doesn't bring this mitzvah anywhere, not in Sefer mitzvahs, but not even in the Yad. He doesn't make, he only brings it as a byproduct to explain why we say Parshat Sitzvah night and Hitchens Kriyashma. He talks about it. <laughs> What's he doing? He should say Hitchens Sitzvah or somewhere else. When he talks about Sipi Tzitz Mitzrayim and Hitchens Chamat Zamat, so he should write the whole year every day and just, it, 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 it's a difference of Hira and in Balai and Pesach, it's a din of Agada. It doesn't do that. It doesn't exist anywhere. It simply doesn't exist. So to, to, to attach this idea that the Ramam thinks that there is a mitzvah of Shir Shitzir Mitzrayim Kol Hashona, Zayimim Michael, it has no ikir, it has no shayush, it doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an end. It's, I, I don't want to say it, but whoever thinks there is, he's got to answer my questions. So what does mitzvah mean? Just like the tzivui before, what did that mean? It didn't mean a commandment. There was no tzivui, as mentioned before. The tzivui of schir is a mitzvah, so you find it, I'll eat my hat, and, and, and I'll have a bush on my arm. 
It means to say yes, there's an inherent value. Now we find where's the lush of Siv of mitzvah, which is not the way Ram was very medayim. When he talks of the mitzvah Kriya Shmai, which is a mitzvah deris, he says mitzvah say. When he talks about this, he just calls it mitzvah. For example, when he talks about the mitzvah of Sipi Tsarim Balaila, it's source Dalit. Well, I read it, mitzvah asay shall tayra, etc. 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 Now, this can run between either mitzvah derabanon, if you want, not a derisa at all. Maybe it's a mitzvah maybe it's a mitzvah derabanon. You'd have to question what's the mechitesi. Or it could mean something else. And I'll give you two examples of what they could mean. For example, there's a Prius bal is a mitzvah. Right? Gemar and Ksubis. What's the mucker? Rashi says, because the Pasuk, Eifat Tzedek, Vahid Tzedek, Yehu Lecha. Do you know Chumash? Pashas Kisei Tzedek. What does Eifat mean? It's a measurement of solids. It's like a pound, okay? Hin, what's Hin in Hebrew? It's a measurement of liquids. Revia Sahin, right? Sukim and Chumash by the Sach. Right? Uniska Revia Sahin. It's like a liquid ounce. What does the Torah tell you when you're in the market and you're selling products, you're measuring stones or whatever they had measuring weights of both liquid measurements and solid measurements should be accurate. They should be tzedek. Don't cheat on weights when you sell things. That's the puzzle. What does Rashi do? Rashi takes the word, you know, the word hin in Aramaic means yes. So the puzzle says hin tzedek yor lecha. Your yes, your commitment, saying yes, I will, your word should be a word. Now, is that pshat, remez, drush, or sod, or just some kind of a, a smachta? Honestly, you really think the pshat and pasuk of hin means yes? So where's the mitzvah? Is there a pasuk, is the mitzvah to raisa? Anech tiketok. What's the mitzvah? The Torah says it's a value. Yes, if Torah expects you to be honest in business, so honesty of business is a value. Therefore, your commitment in business is also a value. Is also you should be honest, and that's why it's binding. What's binding is your commitment, just as you have to, because honesty means integrity is the core of, of commerce. Without that, it's not going to work. Just like there's an idea of hein tzedek, which is taka, mitzvah, I say. Okay, this is mitzvah. What does it mean? It's a good Jewish value, important value. It's not a din. Show, find me a, a mitzvah in a prophet. There's no drush for it. You can't make a mitzvah without a pusik. So it can run, it's either it's a value or it's a din drabbanon. Tick your pick. Most of the, the Ram already writes that the mitzvahs are abbanon, which are not a gather. They need a value. They rise. If not, there's an Isabel Taisif. That's a Rambam in uh, me and a mitzvah in the in Mishnah Torah. So it's either a mitzvah or a based on the value of integrity or the mitzvah is it means to say value and not a commandment of integrity. I'll tell you another one. Mitzvah l'kayim divrei hames. You must have heard that. Right? There's a mitzvah to fulfill the last will and testament of the, of a deceased, of the deceased. What's the mucker? You want to know where the mucker is? So there's a Talmud of the Rajma, right? Yeshua ibn Shu'eb, he has Drashis al Allah and Agada. So he brings the name of the Ramban. It's a piece of Ramban, which we don't have in, in Ramban al but he quotes a Ramban on Vayichi. He had a Ramban in well, those days, you know, he had more manuscripts. He writes the Makkah of Mitzvah is because that the Bnei Yisroel, Bnei Yaakov, listened and fulfilled the Tzavah of Yaakov Avedu and Parshish Vayichi. He says it's also a mitzvah to write a tzavah, to give a last will testament. How do we see? Because Yaakov Avinu did it. What's he saying? Whatever is decided in the Torah shows Jewish values. There's clearly nothing more than a value. It's not a mitzvah, it's not a right? So there's no pussy we can jump on. It may be, it, if he, no, it may be it's a mitzvah to Rabbanu based on that, but the Rabbanu, he doesn't say that. He says that's the mucker. I can show it to you. I own the book. Like I can show you. See, he doesn't say that he smichu ala kra, it's a dindra. No, this is the mucker of Mitzvah Kaim de Vermeis. That's clearly not a Mitzvah Sasei de Rai. So he, he's saying clearly it's not a dindra abundant. What is it? It's a biblical value. I'll take the most interesting one, which is Mitzvah Si Yishu Ver Shisro. It's a Purish Gemara, right? You, you, you do a mirror la akum to acquire a soda. 
in Eretz Yisrael, even on Shabbos, because it's a Tzarech Mitzvah, Rashi writes it. What the sheet is Rashi? Is there a Mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael? Well, the Ramban actually writes that Rashi thinks there isn't. <laughs> Ramban al is the only one that turns the Pusik to mean that there's a religious imperative to live in Israel. He himself writes that Rashi disagrees with him. I can tell you this one disagrees with him. Actually, he's the only reason that learns the psuk to mean there's a religious imperative to live in Israel. That's the honest truth. That's the honest, honest truth. So if everybody asks you, well, it's very simple, because if there would not to be Allah, it's really a question of how to be shot in the psuk, I'm not doing the psuk, you know. Okay? But if you look carefully, there's no Lushan which clearly says that you must live there. But he says, and you will inherit it, and you will be, and if you will drive them out, you'll be able to live there. That's how Rashi explains it. Now he says, no, it's a mitzvah to drive him out, and it's a mitzvah to live there. The much like this, what's the pshat and the pasuk? But Rashtim Oisim be a Shab. Is that saying, if you drive them out, you will be able to live there? Or be so you must drive them out and you must live there? That's a much like this, Sforna and Rashi versus the versus Ramban. So if anybody tells you, well, why, why, why did the Raman bring this in the um, Sefer Mitzvah? Forget all the answers. The real answer is because whoever says he holds like the Ramban. Maybe he holds like Rashi. Why do I have to take for granted the Ramban is the, is the halachic truth and there have to be apologetic reasons why the Raman doesn't bring it? Who says he brings it? The biggest Rai is because he doesn't bring this anywhere in the Yad at all. The only thing that's bought in the Yad is a Mishnah Exubus which says that if you if you want to go live in Eretz Yisrael and your wife doesn't, you can get you can divorce without exuba. Granted, you know what else it says in the Mishnah? If you want to live in your shalim, she wants to live in Ranana, you can do the same thing. Is there a special mitzvah in the Torah to live in your shalim? If you find it, whoo, I'm gonna have a hairy palm. Okay. So this is a raya, this is for kinder. That's the, only, that's the only thing brought down. What is that? The, the Ram Rutenberg already writes. Yes, living your Shalim, Dr. Bisman Beis Amigdash, not today. You can't force her to leave Ranana, or she can't force you to leave Ranana to go to your Shalim. No, nah, no. She wants to be in Ranana. You, you want to leave? She, you, you want to break the Mishpacha? Do what you want, but you have to pay your Ksuba. But, if it can, but why Bisman Abayis? Because Bisman Abayis, when this is the Makam of Sanhedrin, and Malcolm Amigdash, so this was like the Athens, I want to say, the Athens of, of Judaism. Here's the world of scholarship, uh, uh, Tyra, Kedusha, everything. This is where you, this is where the, 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 you know, the main station for godliness, okay? That means it enhances, it's a, it's a mitzvah or a major value to enhance your Tyra and your Shemai. It's conducive. Yes, and therefore, if you want to enhance your religious observance and your religious experience, and she doesn't care. You can cut her. You can, it's a value which allows you to cut the relationship off. That's what it is. That's both on the Rambo. That's about Shukhanah. That's a Mishnah. But that has nothing to do with mitzvah sasei. If you find a mitzvah sasei to, 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 to live in your shalim is man amigdash, <laughs> there's no such pasik. There's no such good boy. There's no such anything. So to bring that sif and Shukhanah or that, uh, that Mishnah, that is a Raya, exactly. I, I, I have nothing to say because you're going to hear these speeches and they're going to bring that. Just do me a favor, laugh. Not in public, it's not nice, but you can smile, okay? Shtiot! Okay? There's nothing to talk about. It's not even on the, uh, uh, on, on the this. The Ramban thinks it's a, it's a, it's a Pasuk, and then Ramban says, because of this mitzvah, therefore it's so important that you can even divorce. Not that the whole Mishnah is talking about the mitzvah. It's not just a value. It's not a mitzvah, therefore it's the value is so severe, therefore you can divorce her even by, you know, forced to live in Jerusalem. That, that's a Ramban, all based on how he understands a Pasuk. No, they're trying to agree with him. But everyone agrees it's called mitzvah. You know how many times we've mentioned mitzvah, yeshiva, zeret, yisrael? What's the word mitzvah there if it's not a mitzvah, zeret, aisha? There's a person that did mitzvah, zeret, bona. Every, everything we have mitzvah, we're going to say, a new din, zeret, bona. Where's this come from? Rabbana, tik, nushi, al yisrael. What's the issue of leaving eret, yisrael? What's called be'er, lo, yeshuv? Well, there's an issue. You know, it's an issue to leave eret, yisrael. You should know, okay? If you're here, if you came here, uh, the Baal Rebbe said that that's why he never came here, because he knows that the, how to get here, but he doesn't know how to leave, I hope he didn't. 
That's why he never came. Okay, he doesn't know the heter. You actually know the heter. Mustami, you know the heter. Because your pshat is your 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 tie your, your tie with your umbilical cord to whatever is before son of Mufarnas you, your son of Shukanavicha, Sun Mame or I'm Khal, whatever it is, and therefore Mamela, you're not really you're like you're here like with a rubber band, you know, tying you. So, so we'll find the answer for you. But Lamai so is Vecha Vecha Mitzvah does. It's another pasha with this is leaving it to so is a zilzo. In that major value of Yiddishkeit of living in Eretz Yisrael, yo, I tell you, is Judy is Eretz Yisrael the values of Eretz Yisrael? I don't think there's another value which has so much Gemara and Midrashim on it like Yeshiva's Eretz Yisrael. It's a super value in Judaism. You know what I mean, it's like woo, like really up there. I, probably more than Shishis Mitzrayim. It's super value, okay, but not commandment. What's an Afkamina? If God commands, he tells you his value, he expects you to do it because you identify with the value. If he tells you to do mitzvahs, what do you, what's he expecting you to do? To identify with the authority of the commander. That's enough to me. A mitzvah is a kula in my book. Because God expects you to identify with his values. He expects you to accept his authority in the mitzvahs. Far cry. He doesn't want you to be here because it's a commandment. He wants you to be here because you understand it's the most important place to be. He doesn't want to command you to pay your debts. He wants you to understand how could you not? He wants to understand, he doesn't command you to listen to, to fulfill the will of the deceased. He expects you to understand how could you not? There's a big difference. I hold a, a, a value is much more humra than a give in the tzivoy as far as aspect is concerned. Uvchein Lefisa, that's the Pshat in the Rambam. There is no mitzvah I say at all for Shir Shishir and Shrim the whole year, period. So don't ask me what's the difference between a regular Monday and Pesach. There's no mitzvah on Monday. What is it? It's a value. It's like Pesach, Baal Chayv Mitzvah. It's like Mitzvah Yishev as well, according to Rebbe Shoinim. It's like Mitzvah the kind of Divra Mess. The word mitzvah is all over. Now, I saw this years, years, years ago, not on this, but a tshuva of the Ben Yishchai. Dealing with the concept of mitzvah, I couldn't find it. I tried to look it up. I don't have all this form. Where he talking discusses that the idea of mitzvah is not always doesn't be is not always used in context. Like there's a mitzvah to go down the Amis Mer <laughs> Yeah, from which pasuk exactly? The text is because it's chibas Er Yisro. Avalche pasuk is chibas Er Yisro. Show me a pasuk of chibas Er Yisro. You have to love the country. It means to say, well, we're going to have to look in the overall pictures of Eretz Yisrael and understand that God loves the country. It's called Eretz Chemda. It's, it's all Eretz Chemda. Vayimasub Eretz Chemda. Okay, if it's the Zabashir, you're Chaymid. That means you have Chiba for it. You're Mizalzel in the Chemda of Eretz Yisrael. That's you're negating a value. There's a mitzvah of Chiba Eretz Yisrael. Think for two minutes. Therefore, the usage of the word mitzvah must be seen in that context. Ultimately, therefore, we just undid something quite major. There is no religious imperative of remembering the Mitzrayim all year. There is a religious imperative of remembering slash relating the mitzvah on Pesach night. I just want to, I know you're going to hear soon, or you may have heard already, these drushes. I just want to, uh, like, undermine it from the beginning, so you should at least enjoy some humor when you hear it. Next. Right. Now, in light of this, now we know the mitzvah. What exactly is the focus of that mitzvah? Now we have to ask, what is the focus of that mitzvah? Why does God, why does God find that value? That value of all year so important? And the mitzvah of, uh, of, of relating that value, that's really a religious imperative to relate that value on the night of Pesach. Why is that? What is the uh, importance of that value? Can we try something from the psukim understand what does God want? What's the purpose of the value? What's the purpose of that value? And now here we have to see different psukim. We all know in the Seder HaGadah, you have, well, we go to your um, uh, uh, page two, the second side, in um, source, in, in source you'd bet, go to the um, um, last two paragraphs. You have Baruch HaMak and Baruch Hu, was here bit of the Agada. Baruch Shana Sintar Lam Yisrael, Baruch Hu, Kenegin HaRabban Debre Terech, and Chacham et Rosh, and Etam Vershin Elisho. You all know this, you've said this already, right? All the Vertlach, you know, this is where you all talk in the Agada. What is the Pasuk? So he starts saying, Chacham Mahu Aymer. 
מה האידוס והחוקים המשפטיים אשר ציווה השם אלוקים לאסכם? Is that now I look at the Pasik and what do we answer? Afata Morlo, Kilchota Pesach, Ain Maftir Nachar Pesach of Ikoma, which is the last mission of Psachim. He's basically telling the face of the time we learn Psachim from beginning to end and make a seem on Psachim at the eight or night to answer his question. Is he asking about Babakaman now, this child? Is he asking about Shvis, Vamis, Ksubis, Gitin? Or is he asking about the night of Pesach? Well, since the answer is teach him psachim, doesn't say finish us, okay, teach him psachim. Obviously, the Balha Gada, which is the mock of this is the Mechilta de the Mechilta de Bishmal. You can open up a Mechilta and you'll see it all there, okay? I don't think it's in the source sheets, but it's, a, it's an often a Mechilta. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think it's in these sheets. But you can open up the Mechilta on the, on the psachim there and you'll see it. Where well, the Mechilta, basically, you know, it's a nice way of saying the Agade is nothing more than, than the Russian of Rabbi Shmuel. Good man, counterpart of Rabbi Akiva, Shmuel Kohen Gadol, as you all know, in the Asaru Gemachus, that's Rabbi Shmuel, the big bar plucked of Rabbi Akiva, Chashvetana, okay? So he understands, now what does it mean? Ma'edus v'chukma mishpot na'shetziva Hashem elokeinu eschem. I'm edus on the night of Pesach. Yes, there's definitely edus. Edus means testimony, Edus, which is testimony for Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, etc. Which chukim are there in Pesach? Well, oh, etzim letish b'rubay. B'zman amigdosh, that was a chayk. That's a chayk. Which mishpatim are there in Leil Pesach? Uh, tell me a mishpat of Leil Pesach. When you think mishpatim, you immediately think of it on the Chavera, correct? Civil law, let's be honest. Which mishpatim are there in Leil Pesach? I'm really asking, this is a rhetorical question. I'm expecting an answer from some body, some body. Nothing? What? He's talking loud, I can hardly see you because of the plastic. Why is it a mishpat? That's Edus. Mm -hmm. Next. Which mishpat is in El, El Pesach? Is there a mishpat on El Pesach? Can I save you time? No. <clears throat> this, so what's he doing? Is this young child actually asking about the dinam of El Pesach? Well, let's look at the primary source. Where's this Pesach found? Go to page Aleph. One and go to source Chet. It's a Pasik verse Chana, it's Deuteronomy 6, verse 20. Ki shall chab bin chab machar. When, where's, when is this machar? Now, if you, if you would remember good old Chumash, if you would do Shnai Mikra, I mean, and know what you're doing. Rashi and this part, yesh mocha lachazman. It's a nice way of saying if your child will ask you one day in the future, when will he ask you? I'd probably when you're like you're, you're, you're trekking up on, in your mountain bike on Killington, and the kid son says, Hey, dad, I have a question. Okay, I used to have this time when I used to walk with my father from Shul to, to Shul and Plum Shul. That was my own private time. That's why I used to, to discuss all my theological dilemmas when I was all of eight and nine. Okay. And what's the question? The, shy, the child asked the father, This has nothing to do with the night of Pesach. Now, what's he asking? He wants an answer. What are the Tariq mitzvahs? Well, between you and me, there's only four psukim for the answer. You really think he enumerated Tariq mitzvahs in these four psukim before you go further? No. So look at the answer and analyze what the question is. If you look at the answer, what's the answer? Why? <coughs> the goal? The Okay, we now know. We took, we were brought out in order to get there to Israel. Very important. And now what? 
כדי שבעיצבנו השם לעשות את כל החוקים האלה, which here חוקים אבסים, חוקים משפטים מנהדוס, means all the laws, okay, it's only when the פוסק enumerates the three that we know it means, uh, this is אבס is חוק משפטים, otherwise חוקי התורה can be a חוק, doesn't have to be דווקא חוק, <laughs> it means system, uh, לחם חוקי, which means the the which means the, uh, the the bread which I'm used to, which is the, that that's what quite means. It means system, okay. What for? The ultimate goal of doing mitzvahs in the year is the shema lokeinu. Okay, that's nice and that's important. Okay, what else? And we will subjectively feel good about this. We'll feel alive equals meaning purpose. It'll be just and the correct thing to do. What does he just say? Tell the child we were in Egypt <coughs> and um, God uh, took us out uh, of Egypt with a strong hand equals with miracles. He, fought, he took us out by force. Okay. What did he do? He placed signs of his existence and proof. Os means a sign. Mofet means a proof. Hello, right? Mofet chotech, a proof. He put signs of his existence and proof of his existence. If you learn Chumash, little Pashas boy and Vayera, you'll see it there. Mofsim b'dolim v'roim b'mitzrayim, but that's enough. He did lay name. Why? Because he wanted us to see the signs of his existence and the proof of his existence. He wanted to remove us from paganism and bring us back to monotheism, as we learned when we learned the. Perik in Yecheskel, if you remember, going back like six weeks ago. Okay. And then, there, therefore, now that we encountered monotheism in Egypt through that year of that seminar of God awareness through the Mante du Kiani Hashem, the Mante du Kiani Hashem Bekerva Oritz, there's God, and God cares and intervenes in your life, and there's no one else but God. The Mante du Kiani Kamoni Bechalor, so the three psukim which describe the Makos. Basically, different levels of God awareness and walking away from paganism. The Ramban elaborates on this in the famous last Ramban and Pasha's boy. Everything you can look up. Okay. Then he continues that, that, you know, that he did this, that he wanted to come to the place, to the place which is most conducive of having a relationship. Eretz Yisrael. Anybody who learns Ramban understands how the place for doing mitzvahs and having connection to God. The Pasik and Chumash, the place which has unique Ashgacha practice is Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Asher, Eini Hashem Elokechem Ba, Mireish Hashem Ach Sashana. In Chutzos, there's no direct Ashgacha with HaKadosh Baruch God works through Malachim and Sarim. That's why the Gemara says that the Yisrael of Chutzlaretz, Oib Deya Vedizara Betaira. You do not actually have a direct relation with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chaim Velashim discusses this Baruch Hava. Okay, that's according to the Ramban. Why mitzvahs are not the in, in, the, uh, the total fulfillment of mitzvahs of Dafkin Eretz Yisrael? Because this is the place we have a direct relationship with God, as opposed to Chutzlas, because you don't really have a direct relationship with God. You have an indirect relationship with God. I don't know if you understand how how bad it is to have an indirect relationship with God. That is the core problem with Avodah Zorah, and that's why Chazal say Yisrael should be Chutzlas. Oivda Avodah Zorah b'Tayri. You're not over in Avera. But you also have an indirect relationship with God. That's what it says. A fushi gemara. Okay, now, this is a pitch for Aliyah. I know, but uh, but, the, the, but this is the truth. If you want to talk Jewish values, that's the emes. So God brought us to Israel. Now what is he? Now okay. Now we have a relationship. Now he's going to fill that relationship with with, with directives. By Savenu, we do the mitzvahs. Why? First and foremost, every mitzvah generates a sense of commander. And therefore, you're generating a sense of God awareness and awe of God. If you restrict yourself for, if you restrict your behavior, if you govern your behavior due to a sense of a commander, it's a nice way of saying, the year is Hashem Elokeinu. Basically, mitzvahs should immediately generate a sense of awe in front of, of, of this, of the authority. Authority, by definition, is something we expect you to love, but minimally, Kabbalah's oil malchush, my min zero, tzimtzum, your mitzamtzum, yourself. In front of the authority. And that's why the Pasik says he commanded us to do this. And what happens in order that we should have, be, live with a acute God awareness, which generates a sense of awe. 
Then he continues, he says, uh, that's A. B, and this will be good for us. Why? Because then we will be perceived as living people. Living means to say connected to the source of life. You can live all, you can exist all your life, but you're not living. Now, this is a Pasuk in Chumash. What's the Pasuk in Chumash? The Pasuk says in the in Vayigash, when Yaakov Avinu met Pharaoh, we all know that Yaakov and Pharaoh asked in Kami Yemei Chayecha. Oh man, how old are you? And he say, he gives him this whole tantrum. He says, well, actually, you know, um, I've been living around, I've been on this, you may, you may shnei migurai, you know, how long I exist in the world. That's a place, whatever he says, he says. But I got very little, you may chayim. I haven't attained, you may chayim like my grand, like my grand, my father and my grandfather. He's telling the difference between you may migurai and you may chayai. I, be, I can be here in this world, but not living. Living is when I understand my purpose, my direction, I'm alive. Yaakov Avinu was in dilemma. Why did I go through all this hell with Yaakov, with Yitzchak, with, with Yosef? In the beginning of Pashas, he, he says, when we say, Vayichi Yaakov, and so I'm, Shvam, Shvais, Lishonah, Vayu Yimei, Yaakov, Shmei Chayov, and he gives them all the years of his life. Because afterwards, when he understood the key of history, why he had to go through all of this hell in order that Yosef should be a Mitzrayim, when he understood the meaning of this whole movement, he realized he was always connected to God, he was alive. So we see from the Chumash that knowledge and awareness of the goal of and the purpose of existence is called Yemei Chaim. Being, just being around is not Yemei Chaim, it's Yemei Megurim. The Balatanya once asked a young Gemara, he says, how old are you? So he told him at 23, she said, listen, I didn't ask you how many years you're eating chunk. How old are you? Okay, he says, I'm 18 years old. That 18 years old, you ate chunk. How, how many years are you alive? That's the question. You may hide. So what does the Pasuk say over here? Pasuk says, if a toy vlano, it'll be good for us. Why? You know, this will give us a compass, it will give us a direction, a meaning, and a person will be alive. This we heard at Sinai. Why do we do mitzvos? We do mitzvos because we encountered God in Egypt and we realized he's omnipotent and he is God, which is totally one, and everything comes from him. He created reality, so he defines meaning and purpose. He brought us to the land in which we will find the ultimate relation with him, and he gave them these laws for what? A, the primary thing is to generate a sense of awe of constant God awareness, Aleph. Now that you have the sense of awe, what else? There's basic value also in doing these things. Why? Because they will give you meaning and direction equals purpose. Then that's, they say, Tzedakah doesn't mean charity, it means the right thing to do. Thus, we understand that he took us out for this purpose, to give us meaning, the God of creation, that we encountered in Sinai, that he basically is the reason of everything, the reason of my birthday, the reason of the creation of my species, took me out for this purpose, that I should be able to live with an intense God awareness of awe and, and have some, a meaning, sense, and direction, and to do this specifically in the land in which is the ultimate place of having that relationship. That's why the right thing to do is to do this. Because I suddenly encountered the reason of my existence that I obviously want to follow my destiny. I realized that's why I'm here. Now, this is a Pusik in Chumish Mulukulama. Go to page sources, I am. What does Bavur Zeh mean? Read Rashi. Bavur Shakayem Mitzvotav. Kimo Matsumur. Not Bavur Zeh, we point to the Matzah. Well, you look at the Matzah more, so these are mitzvos. The Bavur says that I should be a mitzvah. Now, where's the Pusik that says this? I am God, Yudke Vavke means, what does Yudke Vavke mean? Primary existence, which is the source of all. We learned that once in a Ramban and Parshish is right. Elokechem, your Lord. What for? Liyot Lachem Lelokim. I took you out of Egypt for you, I, for me to be your Lord. That was the purpose. 
to have a relationship of lord uh, uh, and subservient. That was the justification, basically, of Yetzirah Mitzrayim. Basically telling you, what is this father telling this child? And what was the question? The question was not, what are the mitzvahs? The question was, why do we keep these mitzvahs? And that's a question I asked my own father. Why are we religious? And the answer has to be, you will tell the child, because we were in Egypt. And how do I know it? Because this is a legacy of history, <coughs> which has been carried thousands of years through an unbroken chain <coughs> of generation. Go all the way to Matan Tyra. <coughs> and we can discuss some other time why I, I once mentioned this in the class. I don't believe in Matan Tyra. I know it was there. I'm not going to explain this at length now. I believe it's the most verified uh, epic in history that, that we have is Matan Tyra, if you really want to know. It is there which we re encountered God after the, the, uh, the downfall in paganism in Egypt. That's where we met God. And therefore, I, we heard God, we as a collective nation, the Hulk on the highway of history, if you remember something I mentioned this morning, experienced an encounter with God and understood its destiny and its purpose of existence and being. That's what happened. And that's how I experienced it. That's what I tell my child. Why do we keep mitzvahs? Not because they're nice, they make you feel good. No, 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 no. Why? Because we encountered our destiny. And the right thing to do is to fill our destiny. Yes, God did this for we have to have meaning and be to have purpose. Yes, there's a subjective attachment to that too. Granted, right? But you know what it is, Lacha, you're saying that you should know and encounter your meaning. Who said it's my meaning? Maybe my meaning is the corn cob. Who says it's my meaning? Whoever says there is a meaning. Cynicists didn't believe there was meaning. That's why he believed school of thought was an Epicurean. It says, it says they believed that uh, human homo sapiens have as much meaning as a cow. Eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow you will die. Don't look for meaning. Major school in, in ancient Greeks, okay? That's why you have the name cynic, okay? Al Shem Cynicist, okay? And Epicurus was this Epicurean. Okay, they were two good friends. The idea basically was basically there is no meaning. You just do whatever gives you feel good. Okay, subjective. Oh, I feel close to God. Yeah, that's that's also like I feel. You feel your toes. Okay, your feelings are totally irrelevant. Uh, what is the truth? The answer is I because we encountered Sinai and we heard the truth. Now, how do I know that was real? Because I know that I met that God. I I'm, I, I experienced monotheism in Egypt because I saw what God did. And I realized this is Yudke Vavke, right? Like Ushmi Havaya, like Nadatlehem, et cetera. You look at Parshish Vaera. So basically, what did those Makos do? Those Makos did one thing. Their purpose was to instill monotheism in our minds. Read a Pasuk in Chumash. That's what this Pasuk is talking about. So it's not talking about, it's not really, it's really not talking about pace of night. It's really talking about a kid asking why are we religious? And the answers were religious because of the way I mentioned. That's what it is. That's the Pasuk. I'm going to show you another Pasuk. Let's look at another Pasuk. How many Pasukim are there that do it? Yes, that's right. Go to source um, Zion, left column, first page. The first Pasuk says, Here we are talking about Tesvav Benissan. And then you go to Pasuk Yud Aleph. And it says, and you, um, This is in your Tefillin, by the way. And some people actually say this. Uh, you must give the firstborn to God. Every firstborn of the cattle. You must make it as a korban. What happens if you have a donkey? You can't easily put that on the mizbech, so you redeem it with a set. But, uh, and if you didn't, if you didn't redeem it, quite crude. We take an axe and we behead the thing. Okay? Okay? And we do this publicly. It's not like some nachal eisen where we do it over there with an eggla. Yeah, yeah, we do it. We're after it, you know? Enjoy. Okay? But chob adam lupidyan. 
No, no. Let me be honest. Ask me a question. Again, you know, a kid who grew, grew up in Israel and he never saw this before. You know, I saw this in Harno. Okay, they did the pinyon petach hamor. They're weird. What do they do? Actually, this is my first. I didn't do this when I had a point to be pointed. I did. Here's the money, you know, and it's getting it done with. No, they put this poor grandchild of mine on a big silver platter as if it was cake and cookie. Okay. The ladies put these chains of gold and pearls and rings. Did you ever see this? This gypsy custom, which has nothing to do with Judaism. They poured like they, and, this, and then they put garlic and cubes of sugar. Oh, God, the poor kid. They weighed him down with metal. And then they put basically garlic and sugar. Uh, I hope he didn't experience anything. And then they take him like this to the kite. Now, what, what would, if you ever saw this the first time, like I, my, my jaw dropped. You know what I mean? I said, Mazois, yeah, literally, what the oomph is this? It's a jaw dropper when you see this. Now, this is nothing. I saw them do it to a donkey. In high enough in Boston Show, they took this poor Hamor, they put chains of pearls on you. Know, I mean, she looks like looking straight, you know, it cool tabas. What can I tell you? And he's dressed up and with all these pearls. And they bring him to the Kayan and they say, he's a little sheep. Would you like to have the sheep instead of this beautiful, bejeweled animal? Okay. Now, the first time I saw this, I said, this must be some gypsy custom which infiltrated Judaism through the Magyars. What can I tell you? Okay, there ain't no way that Moses knew about this, okay? This must be, you know, many, many of Hungarian customs are, 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 are Romanians are, it, it, this knock on wood stuff, all that stuff. It's very much gypsy stuff, which somehow ended up in the Orthodox community. It is crazy, okay? This is like, just sheer madness, okay? You, ever, you never saw this? You never saw the. Did you, ever, did you ever see this, Yaakov? You saw this? It, 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 it's that funny. It, it's hilarious. And then you think, you don't know. So you think, oh, that's what you're from, dudes. And from the idiots, a bunch of gypsies that were born in Budapest. So what happens at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I understand this kid. Look at this kid. He sees this. What does the kid say? What does the kid say? Again, Mocha means in the future, someday in the middle of Tammuz. He sees this pigeon beta chamor with a bejeweled donkey. Okay. And what does he do? His jaw drops. Mazois. What else should he be saying? He's not in the theological promises. What the oomph is this? I think it's the reaction is so normal. It's not like it doesn't show lack of intelligence. If Simpson's like, oh, oh, it shows that this looks very weird, granted. So what's this person? What does he see? He sees Hamor. You will also say feel the same way. You will not say, oh, well, well is this from what you know, you'll start, you, you won't uh, you know formulate it to some proper PhD question. No, you say. Yo, it's a jaw dropper. So the kid does the same thing and says, Mazo, so what do you answer him? Look, it's a whole speech we give him. Is we understand he's an intelligent person. We understand he's in shock. Like he doesn't understand what's happening here. So we give him a historical answer. Look at the answer. So what did God do? In gratitude for that, that's a, that's a, that's the way it ends. That's the answer. It's a very nice question. I mean, very nice, like, what is this? And we gave you the historical background. Is this anything to do with the night of Pesach? No, I don't know, unless there's some kind of a gypsy custom to pick and pick the chamor on the night of the Seder. Okay, I don't recall it. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't know it'll come from there. But whatever, I don't think it's true. So this, once again, this passage has nothing to do with the night of Pesach. This simply has to do with the, a, a normal reaction of a young person to this mitzvah. 
And you have to be told, no, Kedusha's Pechayra is very important because whatever Bach is Pechayra's man, and that goes just like God smith the Pechayra's of the Behemoth and of the Adam, and he saved our Behemoth and our Adam, therefore we give it to a Kedush Bochum. We can't give a Chamor to a Kedush Bochum, so we give it a Seh instead. This is it's a push of time and mitzvahs. So, and we don't expect him to say, my is for chukir mishpat. He's not asking that. He's not asking why. He's asking us, what is the meaning of this activity? So he explained, this is a religious activity in gratitude for the story. That's a lot. What is, that's, that, that is that, nothing to do with Pesach so far. Okay, and there's another Pasek. Go to the source Vav. And if you know the Pasek there, okay, I have to go, I, it, it, it didn't print the previous two Pesach. And we're talking about, Seeing uh, the avoda of the korban Pesach, and you'll have children, and there will you tavdus avoda zusu be mark of the korban Pesach, which means when on you the dalid nisan, correct? And you're going to be mark of a korban Pesach, and then it says as follows: Vaya ki yomru aleichem bnechem moha avoda azoyis lachem. Now. Just the word basis. What does the word shoel means? Request. We, in Hebrew, we talk shoel mimcha, who omer lecha. What, why is it shoel mimcha versus omer lecha? Shoel mimcha means because you're requesting an answer. Shoel mimcha, it's the shuva. You're requesting an answer. Okay, that's what the shayla is. The shayla is shoel lo makshet, and the shoel shoel mimcha. You don't say who shoel oto the Americans or shoel lo shoel mimenu. Okay, you don't say omel mimenu. You say omel lo. One is a statement; the other is a request. Right? You could also make a statement to yourself by Yemer Haman Beliba. You just heard the Megillah, right? You can make a statement to yourself. Some people can talk to themselves. And yeah, and, and definitely the people can talk to us. Now, what's the difference between saying and requesting? When you're requesting, you understand you are expecting an answer. Right? When I make a statement, I'm not expecting an answer. I made a statement. Now, what when do you make a statement in a rhetorical way, in, in, in a question way? When do you say, but you don't really expect an answer, you're making a statement. They will not ask you. They will not expect an answer. They will say to you, what is that child doing? Now you understand why it's important to learn Chumash. The answer is very simple. He's a cynic. He says, what? Come on, what uh, let's be honest. When someone tells me something which is some stupid and it's aliens and Gemara, I say, is that a question? Or when it really gets bad, what kind of idiot are you? <laughs> um, did you learn this? I'm not expecting an answer. I know you didn't. I'm challenging the person, admonishing by challenging. Did you read this carefully? I know you didn't. Don't worry about it. Now do it. Okay? What is this child doing? He's not expecting an answer. He's presenting his case in a, in a challenging way. What kind of child goes and asks a, re, a, a reason for mitzvahs, not in an inquisitive way, expecting an answer, rather challenging and leaving the, the question hanging because he doesn't think you have what to say? That's called the Russia. So now you understand why the Rabbi Shmuel thinks this is called a Russia, not called Eschem, Lochem, and all the other funny stuff. Simply because the Pasik says he's not asking, he's saying. What's he doing? He cynically pointing, remember, this is the child of his an interesting Ritva. Look up the Ritva, Yeve Chedusha Ritva, I'm So in the back there's the, uh, there's the, there's the Pirsh on the Agoda. Pieces of this are all, can also be seen in the midfire. I've moved it differently, but it, I just do this because it's pleasant to know that didn't like come out of nowhere, okay? This child is a remnant of that generation which was still walked out of Egypt. And we all know there are still pagans in their heart, as we learned that Perik in Yechesko. 
Even in Kriya Shamsuf, we know that the Malach says, what's the difference? Why are you killing these and saving these? Why do you think God, the biggest nest is that God skipped and didn't kill our firstborn and killed the others because we were just like the Egyptians. All we did is had three aspects of ethnic identity. We called ourselves Goldberg and we wore Knanite clothes because we liked bell bottoms. And, and I know, and we like kosher style knishes made out of pork. Okay, so the shit is shvam, levusham, lashon. That doesn't mean that only means ethnic uh, ethnic identity. There's no religious value. The little mitzvah to call yourself shindul, you know, and to speak. They spoke shayna because, as the Ramban says, Hebrew was a Canaanite dialect. So it was. They based were a bunch of greenhorns, you know. Uh, what can I tell you? You know, they still lived on Hester Street on the east side. They were like you know, 210 years, but they were still like, you know, they still were ethnically different. You don't understand why it's quite simple because they were Semites and the other ones were Hamites. They were the um, whiteies and the other ones were more of the darker color. They were different, okay? They were, co they were cousins of the Hicksuses that had been thrown out of government, which were also Semites at the time. So basically, you have to understand. So we were ethnically different. And even that, only 20% of us were, were worthy of redemption. 80% of the Jews died because they weren't, they were so assimilated, they didn't even keep any ethnic identity. They died, just like the Egyptians. Only 20% of the Jews were worthy of redemption, not because of religious stature, rather because they had ethnic identity. This implies something very important, okay? That basically, yes, the fact that God uh, skipped over us, we should be very grateful. And that's the answer. Look what happens. The child is a sin. He says, what the hell are you doing? He's a pagan still. Why are you doing this crazy thing? And what does a pagan believe in? The Rabbi says the pagan didn't, didn't say that the, every pagan deity is the creator. No, he knew that Yud Kevavka is the creator. But basically, he doesn't govern the world. He governs through the stars, the constellations, sun, moon, etc. Look at the Ramam of Hilchas Avaydezareperik Aleph. So he says, "What are you doing this for? Like, what meaning is this? You know, if you do something to the sun, he's not a non-believer in a god that didn't exist before the Greek Hellenistic period. It means he believed in the he served sheep, he served the sun. He doesn't understand why are you doing this to Yudke Vavke. Ma'avaydezoyslachem." And the answer is, what do we answer to him? And that's why we call him a Russia, because he's a cynic to religion. The other people asked, Yishalcha bincha leimar, or Yishalcha mazois, or Yishalcha bincha, so here it says, Yaymer lecha, Yamru aleichem. That is a, not a question, that's a challenge. Her footner always used to tell me, that he said, he told me this years ago, he says, listen, I know they're going to come to talk to you about a lot of things. Remember, make sure that when the child asks the question, it's not really his final statement, that's his answer. He just needs you to reaffirm it. Don't answer that. Make sure it's a question. Okay? Big Duff Kamina. This guy's not asking anything. He's making a statement. That's the Russia. Okay, and what do we answer him? There's a real beautiful answer. Tam. But by the way, what's the date of this question? Yud Dalid, when he sees the Akrabus Korban Pesach. Once again, this has nothing to do with the night of Pesach. Do you notice how the four Banim, so far three of them, have nothing to do with the night of Pesach? The Russia is the heir of Pesach by the Akrabus Korban. The Tam is sometimes in Sivan when he's told, he sees Pit and Peter Hamor. The Chacham is probably Elul <laughs> when he's thinking about why do I, why am I religious? You know what I mean? We give a big theological dissertation. And what do we answer to this Russia from Erev Pesach? We say, Vamartim Zevach Pesachul Hashem. Hashem Pesach, but this is a sacrifice of skipping to Yud Kevavke. Why? Because he skipped over the house of the Israelites in Egypt while he was uh, plaguing the Egyptians and our, our houses, he saved. Now, we're very grateful because the Chari didn't have to because logically we were just as bad as the Egyptians. 
and he chose to save us. Why? Because the Rambam says because of the oath he had with, his, with our forefathers and the love he had for our forefathers and the ultimate plan of history that he needs some kind of a nation which will live, breathe, walk, and talk is monotheism. That's a Ramban in Azinu and the Pasuk Amarti Apehem Ashbitam in Zichrom. Look it up. It's a beautiful thing. They were just told they're going to have cynical children, which are still are pagans. At least we'll have children, and they prostrate to God and they bow down. Rashi says, "Thou psurus habonim." It's very beautiful to see. You know, this, now does this pasuk say that the kid has to quit, is cynical to religion? Freeze his teeth. Tell him he's no good. Nope. It's very inclusive. What are we telling him? Look. You're, t- you're, you're not asking a theological question, so I'm not going to give you a theological answer. You're challenging theology. Well, I want to tell you one thing, but I know you don't want to be an ingrate. And this is simply an expression of gratitude to a God which saved our skin. So, and that's an answer even to this. You've neutralized the challenger. You've walked away from theology. And you decide to talk about Hakar Sataif. He saved us, and we don't even, we weren't worthy of it, and he saved us. Very subjective. That's why we sacrificed this carbon. It's a skipping coin to remember that we don't know why he saved our skin, but he did. And that is an answer which the Bible believes that the, that the Russia at that period could relate to. Nothing to do with another Pesach. And it's actually an answer which is very beautiful. The only Pasuk which deals with the night of Pesach is in source Zion, when it says, It says in Pasuk Niches, we got to Labincha, Bayom Ahu, Bavurzeh, Bavurzeh means Bavushi Kem Mitzvosov, or so Hashem Libet Hesim Mitzrayim. In light of this, the Haggadah, actually, Bechut Rabbi Shmuel, is a Pelesh of Plus. What is he doing, Rabbi Shmuel? Well, let's look at the Lushan of the Haggadah, as we pointed out. We did the Chacham. Let's go to page three and see the Russia. Again, the Russia is asking a question about the value of, of, of a Korban Pesach and Yudalid. And he and just says the, the, Chacham in the, the Chacham in the Mikra was asking a theological question in the middle of El. And he had a theological answer. What did the Tana do? He put a new, used the language of the Bible and gave it meaning to deal with the the night of Pesach. And he gave an answer which is pertinent to the night of Pesach. He totally took the psukim out of their context and out of their meaning. What is he doing here, this Tana? Look at the second child, the Russia. (laughs) Does he point on the idea? He's called the Russia. We know he's called the Russia because we are martyrs. Now, so he adds new interpretation. Where's this coming from? Okay, maybe. But then it says, it's not. <coughs> He doesn't feel he's bound by Sinai. He doesn't believe in this whole thing. He doesn't believe in the commandments of this Yudke Vavke. Therefore, he basically is Koifer in the Iker. He basically now does not believe. <laughs> that he's bound by the commandments of Yudke Vavke, he still serves the sun, the moon, or the sheep, whatever it only be. Remember, at the time of the Mikra, definitely there was no, uh, no, no, no other thing. Afatai can't, you know, freeze his teeth. In other words, keep him, like, shut him up. Well, what do you do? You, you not just admonish you, you castigate the guy. Where's this Pasuk? That's the Pusik, which is and where which the Pusik is by the Anu Delisho, the Gata Labincha Bayama Ulaima, Bavarzas, I shall leave it says him it's right, which means Babush Hakim Mitzvot. And we use that Pusik as we're talking about the Russia. We don't use the answer that the Torah gives to the Russia. We put in another answer. We're using a Pusik, which the Pusik, the Torah talks by the Shane Delusho, in order to give a totally different message. It's not Bavur Shekem et Mitzvotav. What is it? Bavur Osa Li, Li V'loi Loi. Is that the truth in the Pasuk? So I said, now why do we say to the Shani and Elisha for goodness sakes? No, is that what the Pasuk meant? We're using the Pasuk. 
Rabbi Shmuel is not translating, not saying pshat, rem is a drush in the pasuk. He's using biblical language to give an answer to contemporary Russia. God help me. The Russia in the Bible gets a beautiful answer, which is very inclusive. Say, listen, you may be challenging religion, but at the end of the day, you're about Midos, and I think you can appreciate a course type. The Russia that your Bishmol is talking about is, is someone which you go, you don't give an answer, you throw him out of the house. So what's he doing? This is not what God meant in the Chumash. Mechi, what's he doing, this Rabbi Shmuel? So he's tasting, we don't know what he's doing with the Chach, we know the Russia. Let's go, for example, to the Tam. Again, the Tam's talking about Kedusha's Pchayra in the middle of Tammuz, I don't know what. Mazois, what do you say? Is that what the answer is? No. What's the answer in the Chumash? A whole four psukim on Kedusha's Pchayra. That's the opening statement, which goes further and explains Kedusha's Pchayra. That's missing here. What is Rabbi Shmuel doing here? What is he doing here? Well, let me explain what he's doing. It's a very important your site. Answers a lot of questions that people have done at Russia's and these commentary books. Pasha Pshat. There's a mitzvah he got to Labincha. We know at Seder night we're supposed to relate the story to our children. And he says this in, in the Torah, in theological discourse, we find four types of children. We find the challenging child, we find the, 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 the uh, sophisticated child, we find the not sophisticated child, and we even have a child which, so to speak, which doesn't ask a question, but you have to initiate for. It. But they're not talking about simply it's yes, it's trying. We know there are children which engage in religious dialogue, specifically the Russia, the Tam, and the Shenyud and the Chacham. They're not talking about night of Pesach. They have challenges with religion, either through cynicism or just his jaw drops, oh, uh, this is awkward, or the sophisticated child, which is like, why are we religious? So we know that in the Bible, children dealing with religious dialogue, the Torah describes them in four different ways. Rabbi Shmuel is saying, therefore, when it says, we got it to Labincha, the Mitzvah to relate to your children, understand the term means you have to relate to, to four different types of children. When it says Bincha, the bed, the ben in the Torah dealing with religious dialogue are four different types of bun. And now he's what he's doing is not using, the, he's not, not saying Pshat and the Psukim. He is using biblical language in order to give contemporary advice dealing with contemporary reality. Example, the Russia. Obviously, the Russia of the Chumash is a child asking a religious, a religious issues with the carbon Pesach. He's cynical about it. It's on your dollar, granted. And there we give a very nice answer of inclusiveness. The challenge of the Russia at that time, this idea is found already in the, in the Ritva, was paganism, do we, uh, paganism versus monotheism. Granted. So we can say, listen, you also believe in this God. You believe there's a lot, a pantheon of gods. But we're grateful to this God. That <coughs> it's very important to the child walking out of Egypt with you, and he's with you in Mitzrayim. <coughs> you doubt at that Korban Pesach. Not the child which even went out afterwards, which even during Kriya Siamsu still believes in Abba Zora. And if you remember the Perak Nyacheskal, even 40 years in the desert, many of them weren't weaned away from Abba Zora. And they didn't keep Shabbos. If you remember that Perak Nyacheskal that we learned. His challenge is paganism. He does believe in a creator, but doesn't think he's alone. And basically, therefore, he's a pagan. When did Rabbi Shmuel live? We're already talking the Roman period, long past the Hellenistic period. The key change in the world at that period was one thing only. <clears throat> Until Greece, people looked to their gods as something pure, pristine, and a moral compass. 
The biggest chiddush of Greece was, and obviously, as we all know, that Rome did nothing more than plagiarize, God, if you know your mythology, plagiarize Greek uh, literature and just make different names instead of Jupiter, it's Zeus, instead of Venus, it's Minerva. The same thing. They're basically, what they did, they bastardized the uh, Greek uh, culture. Morale discusses this at length in his book, Ne'er Mitzvah. You can read it there. Um, the Greeks de deified the gods. They didn't believe anymore that meaning and purpose comes from above. Meaning and purpose man must find from within himself through his logic. That which I can, the world of philosophy was flourishing. That which I can perceive, I, 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 I trust. It's what I, that governs my life. As the Lush of the Ramban and Pasha's Balak is, I say Russia, Aristo, Shaomer, Masha, Eno, Mavin, Eno, Kayam. I can't understand it. It doesn't exist. What were the gods for, for Greece, if you read your mythology? They're a bunch of violent, incestuous, immoral group of people, a quite a mixed up family of a uh, father having a relationship with daughter and brother and sister. It's like Caligula and whatever his, his sister's name was. I forgot it already. No, Vachulu, Vachulu. And they're basically a bunch of unbridled powers, which you have to appease, because if you don't appease them, they can really mess up your life. But they're no more accomplished, they're no more moral, no more ethical. You don't look at them for meaning. They're just a bunch of wild powers, which we actually have, okay, we have to appease. A Vedizora was on the way out, in other words. They were no more, you don't serve them because they're a truth. You serve them because you're paying tax to a dangerous animal. And that's what these things were. You have to understand that. That is exactly as the Rama writes at the beginning of Hilchas Avedis Yom Kippurim, he may buy his sheni tzatza aminus. At the time of buy his sheni, that's when atheism entered the arena. They're still pagans. They still did believe in these Avedis Zoros. Rome definitely did. But where did it start? It started in Greece itself. Tzotza, it started sprouting. Because all of a sudden, there was no more belief in a God of truth, a God of creation. It was basically, that's what, we, we, the, or, for one major Greek theology is, or rather thought is, that the world always was. It wasn't created. Kadmut HaOlam. Ramam elaborates on that in his guide. There's no creator. There's just a bunch of demons and powers which we have to appease. That's minus. That's starting to live without a God and ultimately living with whatever you feel comfortable with. But what you perceive subjectively is right. That's the world, that's how it started. That's the world of your Shmuel's Russia is. So when this, when this child is challenging, in the times of Rabbi Shmuel, is he challenging the same challenge uh, uh, that the Russia in the time of the Mikra and now? The Russia in the time of the Mikra believes in the Creator and understands that there is a Creator. The Yudke Vavke, just he understands there's a pantheon of people that he works with. And he sees no reason to, to, serve, to, serve, to deal with the Creator because the people that he works with, the people which are, he's really, what you really have to deal are the people that deal with you, which is the Shemesh, Yereach, the Chavim, etc. This is a man which has morals and ethics. He understands that. He looks to the gods as, as a compass, and therefore we answer him a moral, ethical answer. But when we talk about the, um, uh, the Russia of, of, of Rabbi Shmuel's period, we're talking about basically what you would call a proper kaifer. He thinks it does not believe anymore in the creator. Kadmut olam. He's not believing the creator. He doesn't believe in morals or ethics which are binding at all. The subjective depends how you feel about things. I mean, one of the most amoral societies in the history was that Greek, was that Roman period, if you know anything about ancient Rome. Literally, uh, bestiality, pedophilia, homosexuality were more than normative.
I mean, if you read real history, I don't know what the comic books have to say. It was a horrendous society. Heathenistic orgies were the name of the day. Okay, a very disgusting society. Okay, the Russia at that period, are you going to give him a, he basically doesn't think he's bound by anything. What answer do you have to give that person? He's not, he basically criticizes, he's, he's being cynical about the whole concept of religion. Not just of monotheism, all religion is shtiat. So what do we say to him? You would not have left. You're right, you'd be part of those 80% that died. If you, I don't answer, I just freeze your mouth and say, shut up, you're not part of us. That was the appropriate answer given for the rush of the period. Yes, that's how Rabbi Shmuel is not he's taking biblical characters, using psukim in context of the night of Pesach. How must we deal with these children at that period of time of Second Temple? And he gives his advice using a pasuk spoken, by, which is actually used by the Shani Deli by the Tam. Excuse me, by the Shani Deli show, twisting it to be to show an answer for the contemporary Russia. He doesn't think that's what the Pusik means. He's using biblical language to give a, a, educational advice to deal with that kind of child at that time. On the night of Pesach, because he's going to be there. They're always going to be there. I say this because if since this is the Pshat, there's no other way of understanding the Mechutzah Rebbe What's he doing? It's like against every part of the Pusik I can think about. And the answer is, if that's the case, it means to say that today it's also not applicable anymore. There's no more real koifer. I've tried to find one. I, I like a good koifer. I don't, I don't have, there's no koifer anywhere. This is a bunch of balitaiba. But people stop thinking. They only think from their waist down. Uh, there's no decent koifer. There's no one worthy of getting the answer of the, of the rush of the Agada. There's no worthy of it. That's the honest truth. You know, there's no real kaifer. It's a bunch of low, shallow thinking by Litaiva. They don't feel comfortable with things and therefore they just, what for? That's not a profound uh, I, 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 I looked, I'd love to meet a real Apikairis. I looked in Litvak, I'm saying. Uh, alum de Shapikairis, nah, by Litaiva. I haven't met one yet. Alavai, you should meet one, you know, at least one. Okay. I don't think that I haven't met one. Trust about the type. No, I, I, I read Dawkins. He's just an idiot. So why would he not even be getting up because he's like, oh, tippish. You know what I mean? Uh, why talk about it? He's not worth thinking about. I don't know, whatever. Read him. Simply pathetic. But uh, he's intelligent. Just he's very populistic because every schmendrick which doesn't know how to tie his shoes, like, oh, he speaks English, you know what I mean? Sounds nice. You can peel it with a little with a little finger and it falls apart. I have a student in London, Daniel Rowe. He runs a uh, uh, UK. So he was on YouTube with this big machlekes between him and one of his other, you know, big uh, precursor. And I was listening to it. I, I called up Daniel and said, Daniel, you're lucky I wasn't there instead of you, instead of him. I would give you a run for the money. This guy, you were. This was easy prey. And this is one of the big epicorsum, so to speak, of London. He's an idiot. He was so easy to undo him. You can run circles around him. He's not Shava Pruta Bamada. You should have had me. You know, okay, let's, let's play the game. You know, we'll do it next time we meet in London. I'll undo you. Okay. You know what I mean? It's a garnish. I'm saying this for real. Today, Baruch Hashem, there's no such thing. Today, it's Balitaina. The answer of the Agada is not appropriate for now. Never, never, but never use it. It was appropriate for the time of Bayez Shani, just as it was not appropriate, Bismana Mikra, the Chumash says so. Well, it's not appropriate now either. There's no Jewish child that you can see, you should tell him, Hake Shinov, throw him out and say, Eli Yashem Lo You don't understand, if you understand anything about anything, you can understand that. And try and say it's a beast of a kutcha that Bishmo is not saying pshat and pasuk, he's using psukim out of context totally. 
to what? To give educational advice of how to deal with the four types of children in context of the story of Pesach. Now, here's something interesting. He obviously believes that the night of Pesach is not about theological dialogue. It's about telling the story of Egypt. Why? Because if the night of Pesach would be about theological dialogue, then he wouldn't have to change anything about the Ben Chacham. He could have just said, Be'echet Chacham, tell the whole question with all the answer right in the Chumash, which is a real theological dialogue. Why do we keep mitzvahs? We learned in Egypt that there's a God, and that's why we keep mitzvahs. Why is the Kedusha's Pechayra? Because we learned met God in Egypt, and blah, blah, we understand Kedusha's Pechayra. Well, in, in, uh, the Russia, why we mock of the Korban Pesach, then do the night of Pesach, because of... We're grateful to God. That's a theological question to religion. That is not a country of Bishmo. The fact that he uses these psukim out of context means the context is not appropriate for the night of Pesach. He's basically telling you that the primary thing in Pesach is to focus on the story of what happened there and who was redeemed there, not about and therefore what. It was to start saying why we why we religious. That is not the issue of contra bishmol in the mechilta. Because if that would be, then all of this makes no sense. Now there's another mechilta which is a talmud of his friend Rabbi Akiva. It's called the mechilta de Rajbi, that Shimba Yochai, one of the youngest talmidim of the second generation talmid of Rabbi Akiva, the youngest actually. He also was Muslim, Rabbi Yehuda, Rekiva, but since it was already at Vesayf Yavov, he got another smicha later, as the Ram brings. And let's look at the source Yud, and I'm going to stop with this today. In Mitzvah Sasei Kufnun Zai, in the Sefer Mitzvahs. Literally, in the middle of the page, one, two, in the middle of the source Yud, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleventh line, the last three words. This is talking about the Pasuk. Where? In Veschanon. Dealing with what? The question of why are we religious and the answer. Michlal Shine Emar Ki Shalcha Bincha Yachol Im Yishalcha Ata Magidlo Vimlav Ein Ata Magidlo. I don't understand. Is that talking about the night of Pesach, that Pasuk? No. It's talking about someday in Tammuz. What exactly is the Yachol there? Why would we think imu shoel atamagidlo, mitolo shoel tolo magidlo? Now I can tell you because I've experienced this, and thank God I grew up in a good house. There were teachers that, when you had religious questions, they used to be angry at you. They didn't like your questions. We don't ask these questions, right, or something like that. There are certain institutions which questions aren't celebrated. Thank God I grew up in a house where questions were encouraged, celebrated, and, and actually, you know was applauded. Think. Okay. It really helped me. I, I have a small feeling that wouldn't have had that support at home. I'm not sure if this would have stayed on my head. Remember, I grew up in the turbulent 60s and 70s. There was a lot happening, believe me. Let me tell you right now. Baruch Hashem, the only Tzvil Sadech I ever said is when I went into a car between cities. You know, I didn't need anything... For its filo sederich, you know, baruch Hashem, clean as a whistle. Okay, yeah, it could have gone who knows where. It was a crazy world. You wouldn't even understand the the, the turbulent sixties. It was like wow. <laughs> yeah, one day I'd be a little drunk to tell you what it was like, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It was really interesting. Colorful people all coming off the trees of India, all converging on Israel. On Israel. Man, I mean, the first time I saw a guy do a joint was at the Kaisel. You know, he was a kid from Borough Park that also was with this long hair already, you know, five, whatever it be, living in some hostel in the old city. 
He made a bong out of a broken glass, put this aluminum paper in. Did you want some? <laughs> I'll scare out of my wits. Okay. This was my casual encounter with Phyllis Adera. You understand? So thank God. Heidel Hashem. But let me tell you, I felt very strong because I really understood my religion. I really understood my, my and no, no, I believed it. And no little idiot and no little type was going to move me. I have a big action. I have the typhus. I love certain things. Okay. Yes. I do. Stickable type for learning, for reading. Okay. But that's where, you know, that's my biggest type and whiskeys. But uh, <laughs> if they're decent. Okay. But, uh, but basically, uh, you know, books and booze make sense. They all have BOO in them. Okay. But uh, really, uh, people think, you know, that people say, oh, don't rock the boat. The kid's not asking, don't rock the boat. There are other approaches. No, 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 no. no. The kid's not going to be a child all his life. He's going to encounter a complex world out there. He's going to go to grad school in a real school, not this sheltered little, you know, institution here or there. He's going to go to a real school, go to Yale, go to Princeton. Between the hedonism and, and, and cynicism of the world of contemporary academia, when you have incest fest for freshman year in Harvard Yard, I don't even know what that is. Let's just say it's a week of pure lack of sneers. Uh, people go, you know, ice skating uh, in the Levush of Adamarish and Koyda Machet. It's really cool, you understand? This is already Harvard, okay? You understand what we're talking about? This is, you're gonna, a kid's going to meet the complexities of the world, which religion really is, forget it. If he won't really know and understand his religion in depth, if from age zero, he has to slowly but surely develop inquisitiveness and intelligent thought. You can say, no, 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 fossils, holy lachas, they all made them up. Come on, you an idiot or something. Hello? Come on, look, I know carbon dating. I know I think, do me a favor. No, so God made an old world. Well, he's a weird God. Now, you tell me, that doesn't make too much sense either. So come on, talk to me. If you're not going to give something which will work, this will not last. If you don't give the tools for inquisitiveness of question, of primary texts, of seeing primary texts, seeing the complexities of religion, its dilemmas and its answers. If you don't allow a child the, the, the journey of Kohelet, of asking and asking and asking until he finally comes to the end of Kohelet, if you don't allow him to ask all the questions in the middle, that is not going to happen and he will falter. Or he's just a flathead who will deal with properties in London, you know what I mean? Or something like that. No, he'll live in Golden's Green to be a sweet little boy or live somewhere in Lawrence and he'll uh, go to a good convention, you know, something like that. Yeah, if you want to be a flathead, but if the kid's going to really be like an, a thinking person, he's got a major challenge. And that's what he says over here. He says, do we rock the boat on religious issues with a child, or do we wait for it to be mature enough to ask the question on his own? I hate to say it, when he's that mature, if he hasn't been trained to think and respect, it's a bit late. And that's Mams the Shakavataria in this Mechil to the Rajbi. What Pasik is that? That the Pasik of the Chacham. Why are we religious? Yechol, one would have thought, Im Yishalcha, if he does ask the question, why are we religious? Ata, Omer Gidlo, then you give him and you tell him this whole story, the basis that we met, Mantheism, Egypt, meaning, purpose, and everything we read. But if he doesn't rock the boat, doesn't ask you why, he's a sweet little kid, he's religious because of, I don't know, what social convention. I'm not going to start asking why are you religious, why are you religious, because I'm ashamed to listen to the answers most of the time. Okay? They say, well, because X and Y and Y and Y. And y, and y, and y, and y. The only real answer is what it says here, because God, we met God, and in God we understood this is our meaning. That's why I do it. 
that I am called Shnois Chaim, I have meaning and purpose, because the, the God creator of all told me that that's why I'm here. Basically, the revelation of Egypt and Sinai are the reasons for me identifying existence, meaning, and purpose through my relationship with the Kaddish Boko as an Abed. That's why I keep the mitzvahs. Okay? So do we rock the boat? Or do we allow it to just with social convention? Like most people can live that way to the age of 120. Take your shul, whatever shul you're diving, and you start asking that question. The answers you're going to get are hilarious. Me, if those were the answers, this would not be on my head. I can promise. It wouldn't. I needed and I have Baruch Hashem, a very deep, profound, colorful, flavorful religion that, man, I laugh at anybody that doesn't have it. It's Rachman, Tzab Alechayim, I'll say good yom to you. You know what I mean? But the, my, you guys look like you know what you're missing. You don't hop what you're missing, that's all. It's a it's, 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 Rachmanus. After Rachmanus, you have compassion for people. But that's what it says over here. Look at the words. It's like frightening. What's the Talmud Lamer? How do we know that you're supposed to initiate? So what's the poet say? Uh, he says, Talmud Lamer v'igata l'bincha af al pi sheino sholcha. Stop. That's a pasik about, about, about Sipi Yitzis Mitzrayim. What's this got to do with the pasik in Veschan and deal with religious dilemmas? How does A answer B? The answer is because Raj B, as opposed to Bishmol, thinks that the theme of the evening is not the story of Egypt, but how the story of Egypt is the platform and the basis of our religious theology. And therefore, the focus of the evening is, a religion, is to use the Egyptian, the, uh, the Exodus epic, epic as, so to speak, as a platform, a springboard to engage in theological discourse. You're supposed to start with the Vodim Ayinu, that start explaining, you know, literally analyzing the answer brought down here in Vezhanon. You may need a few good prakim and marin of Vuchim under your belt between the Knedlech and the fish. And therefore, according to him, the Agad, the way we know the Michut of the Rabbi Shmuel, is off the charts. Now here it's funny because the Raman brings it here. And actually, what do we paskin? Do we paskin or bishmol, or bishmol that the theme is the story of Egypt? Or do we paskin Rajbi that the theme is the story of Egypt is a means towards an end to attain the philosophical or theological discourse? Well, actually, it's a pasik in Chumash. Pasik says in Chumash, Bayel uh, Paroy. Etc. means the signs of my existence. All this was done for one purpose that you should tell your children what? That which I basically finagled and played the Egyptians. What for? And learn be eun. Those osos of my existence, which are the makos, for what purpose? Biyadatem ki ani Hashem. Didn't he tell you that that's the reason of the sipper Yitzias Mitzrayim to learn biyun? What theological teachings do we learn from the story of the makos? What did the Jews experience theologically in that year, twelve months of the makos? And then they knew, they realized monotheism. That's what you tell your children. Now you go back to the Ramban of the last part of the Parsha's boy, and we elaborate on this idea. Obviously, the sum of the Pusik really sounds like Rajbi. Yes, we do tell the story of Egypt, but it's a means towards an end to the Adatem Ki Ani Hashem. To see this in a clearer way, we still have patience because I can go on, but it's very late. I'm just doing this very fast if I can. There's a famous Machlekes in Gemara Versus Masl Bignus Umsayim Bishwach. 
There's a machlek is Rav and Shmuel. What does Masle Begnus mean? Ramu holds is also machlek is what Messiah and Bishvach means. People, whatever, I don't want to say who, made all speeches to say the Messiah and Bishvach is the Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. The question is, where do we start from? Do we start the fact that we had a bad time in Egypt? Or do we start how we were not worthy because our grandfathers were pagans? Whoever said that and printed that in whatever book it was printed, it simply didn't learn Rambam. And what do we do? La Lacha, we do both. The Rambam points out that the primary story is X and the secondary story is Y. Now let's read the Rambam inside. The Rambam is in, um, uh, let me show it to you, in Hilchus Chametzu Matzah, Perik Zion, Sos Yud Aleph, Halacha Dalad, left column, top paragraph. B'tzorach l'haschu b'gnus u'lusayim b'shvach. Keitzad, how do we do this? First and foremost, matchil u'msaper, she'b'tchila hayu avotein v'mei terach u'milfanav koifrim v'toim achrei ha'hevel. They were koifer in the yichud of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. They knew there was a God, but they didn't think he was alone. V'tayin achahevel, they were misled and followed that which is non-consistent and not real. That's what hevel means. Then, right fim That's the story. How do you end the narrative? And you end that story. Umisayem, you end that story with what? Bidasa emes, the true religion, shekirvanu amakim loy, that God brought him close to him. Vivdilanu minatayim, he separated us from those which were misled, vikirvanu liyichudoy, and he brought us to his monotheistic belief of oneness. So this is an independent story which has a beginning and an end. Mitchila ivda vazar yavaseinu, va'achshav kirvanu amakim loy, that's the master we can listen, that's the Messiah Bishvach, that's me, that year, but kayim that, that's it. What about the story of Egypt? And there's another story. Then he says, V'chein, and also, now the cloud in the luck is whenever it goes this way, the A, and equals and is the secondary. V'chein, and also, Maschil umoidia, Sha'avon ma'yinu lefari b'mitzrayim, V'kola ro'o shigmalanu, U'mesayim, where do you fulfill that? He says, She idrash me, Arami, Ovid Avi, etc. The five sukkim over there in Arami, Ovid Avi, we were Dairish, and that is the Masla Begnus and the Sayyid Bishvach of the story of Egypt. What has he just told you? He just told you there are two narratives in the evening. The first narrative to focus on is the theological and uh, walking away from paganism, embracing monotheism, and what that means. That's the Mechilter Rabbi Shmo, the Mechilter Rabbi This is Das Rav. And Amira. Das Shmuel is basically, you no, know, the second one. To talk, talk about we were slaves and now we are free. And tell the whole story. You know, it's Lashon the Ramam as you finish, and Ubeche Rusenu. It's not enough to talk about how things were bad and there were miracles. The appreciation of freedom as a value of its own is an important part of the evening. The Siam is with freedom. Remember that. So, what do we see here? We actually, the Ramam pointed out that this Machlekes of Masa, B'Shvach, it's not one narrative, the question is where we start from. There are two separate narratives. One is about the transition in theology between paganism to monotheism. And those are hard words to explain. You really have to explain this. Most people don't know what these things really mean. And that's an important area. That's literally how the Mechut Rajmi's approach. It's an even evening of theological discourse. And then there's another narrative which is we talk about the story of Egypt. How are they combined? It's obvious we see the Pusik combines them. There are two issues. One is a means and the other is an end. 
the man to sapper by his name Bincho, Ben Bincho, Esther Shay Saralti, Ben Mitzrayim, Ves Oiso Isai, Esher Sangti Bam, what for? Be it at them, Ken Yashem. So this is basically the evening. Now, it basically puts down to say, saying Vortlach and the Agada is not what the night is for. It's meaningless. So it's a waste of time to buy all these commentaries and words. What you should be doing is studying Be'iun, obviously, first and foremost. What does it mean? That's a lot of literature. The transition from paganism to monotheism. Ramban, the end of Pasha's boy, and there's so many other places. You gotta learn a lot of Mer You have to be fluent in to, to really to understand what happened here. It's no joke. That's that narrative. And how exactly did we come to it due to Mitzrayim, which is what those Psukim describe, right? Why do we keep the Mitzvahs? Because the God we but in Mitzrayim. Here, Anech Hashem Elokecha, would you become aware of me? I shall say, Sicha me, Eretz Mitzrayim. That's where you know me from. There you have it. Everything is from Mitzrayim. Because see, Mitzrayim is actually the foundation, the platform on which all of our religion rests upon. The fact that we encountered God in Egypt. There's two psukim, there's one important psukim in, in Hosea. The Chumash says, In Hosea, the Palashan is, There's the God that extricated us and the God we encountered while we were still there. Think, food for thought, but this is something, yes, we have to understand what we learned in that year before he took us out. Because that's the basis of it all. And then what do we learn exactly at the point of when we left in Cherus? What's the value of Cherus in a theological meaning? The fact that you're free is very sweet. What is theological meaning? How does this play into Yehuda, etc.? All this is what the evening is. So the Maisa, we, we saw here today that the the Agada, the Nusach, on one hand, is very much the Mechut Rabbi Shmuel. Yet in Rav and Shmuel, according to Raman, we see a merging of different narratives. The source of that narrative is talking about Chilo Hayyav Vedizorah and now Kevin Yehuda. That's literally the Mechut of the Rajbi. Talking about hello, why should I listen to mitzvahs? Why am I religious? Basically discussing the whys of religion, which there was a Havamina, you shouldn't rock the boat. And the answer is, at least the night of Pesach, you should, you, you're allowed to rock the boat. You should rock the boat. Get a child aware of the complexities of religion and then not just be religious out of social convention and wrote, <clears throat> that's a very big deal. So you guys, now, when the kid is young, you do it a very, you know, you, you, know, you have to understand, the Gemara says, you have to be able to do it according to Daita Shotinai. When the kid's young, just tell him, the Gemara says, what do you tell him? You tell him, you know, we once were slaves and now we're free. And elaborate on freedom. That's a Gemara in Psach. Okay? Okay? And we should thank God that we're free people. You don't even have to do the gory details of the terrible Makos, what happened there. That's what the Gemara says. Okay? Okay? And then you go for the evidence where you teach the Makos, what you should be teaching is what did we learn from those Makos? For that, I suggest you read a Barbanel and Ramban. They elaborate on that. And also, by the way, even the, yeah, Barbara Ramban, those are two big ones, which deal with that uh, in the mouth. You have to learn pa these parshas of Chumash Be'ir with the Rishonim to get to understand what you're doing. I can't say it's, it's a labor. As I must say the honest truth. The, the, only, the first Seder I had in ages, which I really could finally do, what we always wanted to do was last year when I was alone with my wife and didn't have children and grandchildren. So we actually are mature human beings. Uh, you know, we spent like four hours discussing Iker Adas. You know, we, you know, there was a lot of Marinavuchim rolling around between her and me. It was a pleasure. Finally, I did the way I think you're supposed to do it. You know what I mean? Because normally there's always this little thing that you have to give chocolates to. 
and, uh, and, and I said, I'm not going to give you, I don't want to answer your question. I need you to ask me questions. I give prizes to my grandchildren, which ask. And when you tell me, what does Russia mean? No, no, no chocolate for that one. Okay, why, why is the, oh, one child was asked me, why is the um, uh, Russia uh, next to the, uh, what was it? Echad Chacham, Echad Russia, Echad Pam, Echad Shein Delisho. Okay, so, you know, so said, why is this by next to this one, not next to that one? You know, the different orders is not a question. I don't want questions on the Haggadah. I need questions on the story, uh, on the story of Egypt. Questions on the Agada are not what we're supposed to be talking about. Literary critique is, yeah, if you ask questions the way we learn today, that's that's talking the Pshat, what's Pshat and the Chumash. Okay, I learned the Mechilta to understand what it means. Okay, that's something else. Ah, that would be a question. Okay, what's happening here? That's a big majos. That was the question. I actually got I, this big bag of chocolates, not for answers. You sing Manishtana for the tomorrow, I couldn't care less. You don't know what you're saying. It's a meaningless activity. Okay? You need to, to you know, the children all have to do it for their ego. They have the man, the Ishtana, they're together. Okay. Now, what is that did you say? Kulano Mesubim. You know, I always ask, well, what does Mesubim mean? You know, after after we finish, no, I don't know what Mesubim means. Forget it. Okay? We all know. We, by now, we know that most people don't know what Mesubim means. Uh, and they definitely not Makai the dinner of a soup in the way it should be the Napi did. Uh, so, you know, forget it. You know, so I don't bother with these questions. I want questions of theological content or tell me, describe what happened in Egypt. Okay. What happened during Borod? I'll explain. You know, what happened? To, that's what I get. So you bribe the kids with tons of chocolates. Okay. They end up, you know, they stay up because they want chocolate, uh, pirate chocolate, right? Uh, obviously. And that's how this happens. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting experience. It's educational. I feel godly because you really have to come down for your Olympus and slum it with the uh, four year with the five year olds. But it's really cute. You feel like Oliver in the Lilliput world, you know. And I guess God feels the same way that He even cares about us. So being godly is even is slumming it. Good evening. Bye. End meeting for all.